okay so welcome welcome to this video and in this video we are going to discuss about how to develop a suitable dissolution method for immediate release dosage form and let us quickly begin with the presentation okay so these are the five various stages you have to complete during dissolution method development, the first one is solubility, the second one is selection of medium, dissolution medium and its volume, selection of rotating apparatus, uh, selection of apparatus speed and the lastly, the selection of suitable specification for your drug product. So I am going to explain to you the entire dissolution method development with the help of one example and this is the article uh, uh, which is published into dissolution technologies. And the name of the article is Development of a Discriminating Dissolution Method for Immediate Release Soft Gelatin Capsules Containing a BCS Class 2 Compound. Right? You can also refer to this article in parallel to this video. So let us begin with the first point which is the solubility. So it is very important that you know you need to have a dissolution medium in which the drug substance has a adequate solubility and hence the solubility will never become the rate limiting state right whatever low release or fast release you are getting is not related to the solubility but it can relate with the kind of formulations you are making the kind of changes you are making the excipient that you are using that must reflect the slower or the faster release the characteristics of release must get changed because of the excipients and the processes that you are using for manufacturing of the product but not because of the solubility constraints. So it is very important to choose a solubility in which um, at least let us say that you know the 3x the thrice of the highest strength of the drug product will be easily soluble. Right. So if you look at the uh, this example and this is nothing but the loratidine right. And if you look at the loratidine, it is the weak base having pK of 5.25 and the loratidine has a good amount of solubility at pH, uh, it is acidic site at pH 2 or 0.1 normal ACL. But when you move towards the alkaline side, then the solubility gets drastically dropped and you know you will have only let us say 4.32 microgram per ml solubility at pH 6.8 or 3.16 microgram per ml solubility at pH 12.5 buffer. See, this is a BCS class 2 drug having a poor solubility and because of that, you may think of, you know, uh, using the dissolution mediums outside the GI tract. It is always justifiable in case if you are handling the poor soluble drug substances. If the drug substances are water soluble, having good amount of aqueous solubility, then you need to restrict yourself within the GI tract pH range that is from pH 1.2 to 6.8 but for example if a drug substance is poor solubility having very poor solubility in that case you know the, the so pH outside the GI uh, ranges can also be used. So what is the choice of your dissolution medium now right you must think about using the 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid as your dissolution medium. So we got now the first very requirement for the dissolution method. We have now selected the dissolution medium. And what is the selection of, what about the selection of the volume? You can think about 500 ml or the 900 ml. So these are the two widely used volumes for the dissolution method development. So let us assume that in this case, we have selected 900 ml of the dissolution volume. So we got two very important information in hand. The first one is medium and its volume. Okay, so now let us understand the selection of a dissolution apparatus. See, when it comes to immediate release dosage form, the scientists generally prefer to use either basket, which is apparatus one, USP apparatus one, or paddle, which is USP apparatus two. So you need to conduct an experiment by using both of them and then understand you know which one is really suitable into your case so let us have a practical data on the screen and here it is so you can say that you know the dissolution profile of loratidine soft gelatin capsules using basket and the paddle 
and what is the medium we have used we have used now 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid as a dissolution medium with the volume of 900 ml so the green line indicates what the paddle apparatus the dissolution profile by using a paddle at 100 rpm and just below that this black color line indicates the dissolution of loratadine capsules soft gelatin capsules by using paddle but with 50 rpm the red color line is what now the dissolution profile of loratadine with basket at 100 rpm and the last one is basket with 50 rpm so this is the data you have received with the four different experiments two lines with the paddle and the two lines with the basket so what inference you can draw from this data do you get any conclusion about the selection of the apparatus which apparatus do you think is more suitable for this loratadine product yeah please do type in the chat box and let us understand let us analyze the data received from the paddle experiments so paddle at 100 rpm gives the burst release if you look at the green line that is the paddle with 100 rpm you will you have got almost more than 90 percent release at 10 minutes itself right and there is no discrimination possible with paddle with the 100 rpm similarly if you look at the 50 rpm data with the paddle right this is black colored line can you able to see this lot of variations coming at the early time points and hence this early time point variation could be you know the reason of losing the discrimination because sometimes the early release also indicates the good amount of uh, indications about the in vivo study so it is very important to have the discrimination power at the early time points like 10 minutes and hence that because of this the paddle looks to be a unsuitable for this particular product let us talk about the basket data now so with the 100 rpm can you see the gradual increment into the drug release profile this red color line it's a very beautiful line right you are getting the gradual increment which is really going to help you out in meeting the required discrimination when you look at the 50 rpm it is also a gradual increment but the release the rate of release is much much slower as compared to the 100 rpm so what you can think about uh, this data now and the most important information is also look at the physical observations so as per as this particular product the capsule remained uh, submerged so the pap the capsule was not coming floating onto the surface or not dancing inside the medium so probably you need not to think about the usage of sinkers during conducting the dissolution if the panel uh, is your selected apparatus but as we are talking about the basket the the sinker question remains uh, un, not required and hence let us talk about now as well uh, zero down on to the usage of apparatus it is a basket right we are think of now selecting the apparatus which is a basket for our next study right the basket remains to be more suitable so let us understand now so how many parameters we have selected so far we have selected dissolution medium, dissolution volume and the apparatus, the rotating apparatus. The fourth important parameter is now the selection of the apparatus speed. Right? We have studied the dissolution with 50 rpm and 100 rpm basket. But which one is really suitable for us? And for that reason, you may have to again study the dissolution. Let us add three different speeds using the basket. One is with 100 RPM, that black color line is with the 100 RPM. The red one is with the 75 RPM and the blue one is with the 50 RPM. So which one looks better for you? Are you going ahead with the 75 RPM, 50 RPM or 100 RPM? What is your choice of speed, right? Now, if you look at the data, See, this is an immediate release dosage form, right? And in this case, it is always preferred to have a dissolution release more than 85% at the end of, let us say, 60 minutes. So, let us understand in which two different apparatuses speed you have achieved this requirement. And you will identify that, okay, in both 100 RPM and 75 RPM, the drug release is more than 85%. Uh, so that anyone 
can be a suitable apparatus. But moving ahead, it is always good to have a apparatus speed which will not give the over, uh, which will not give the more release uh, because you will not be able to understand the smaller differences into the different formulations or the prototypes. So if you select 75 RPM, we will have the good amount of discrimination as compared to 100 RPM, right? As compared to 100 RPM and hence it is a good idea, you know, the wise decision to think about 75 RPM is our choice of speed with the basket. Now let us understand, you know, how this dissolution parameters is discriminating the different formulations and what is the meaning of discrimination when uh, the dissolution method gives a different release profile to the differences made into the formulation it can be processes it can be different excipients it can be different form of the api it can be different particle size of the API. So let us now understand whether whatever parameters we have discussed so far is really going to help us in meeting the discrimination requirement. And this is the formulation, right? There are three different formulations. These are the development formulations. And if you look at the critical excipients, you will find that the medium chain triglycerides, that's MCT, and mono and diglycerides, that is MCM, these are the two important critical excipients. And what are the ratios? In the formulation 1, it is 50 as to 50. In formulation 2, it is 75 as to 25. And in the formulation 3, it is 100. So let us now understand, you know, if you use the 0.1 normal SL with 900 ml volume, basket with 75 RPM, what is the release profile for these three different formulations and here it is onto the screen right so the green line belongs to the formulation one the black line belongs to formulation two and the red line belongs to formulation three so do you achieve a discrimination between three different types of formulations where you have a ratio of mcm to mct 50 as to 50 in one formulation 75 to 25 in second formulation and 100 as to zero in the third formulation this indicates that yes this dissolution conditions also provides discrimination with respect to the critical excipient and hence this looks to be a suitable dissolution method for the lorated in soft gelatin capsules let us not stop over here but understand what is the impact of this dissolution condition on to the stability study and let us assume that you have a product with the six month stability data right on uh, 25 degree celsius long term conditions and 40 uh, degree celsius and 75 percent rh on to the accelerated condition so let us now understand what is the stability study data see on this uh, in this uh, diagram you will find that the first blue line the top one line is with the long term storage condition that is 25 degrees celsius and 60 percent rh so it is perfectly giving the required meeting the required specification of let us say more than 85 percent in 30, in 60 minutes right but when you look at the second line that is a black color line and this belongs to a dissolution release in the accelerated condition that is 40 degrees celsius and 75 percent rh sorry not the black one but the red line just look at the red line so this red line belongs to a dissolution profile for the sample stored at 40 degrees celsius 75 percent rh for six months so do we see a drastic drop in dissolution right at the end of 60 minutes how much is the release it is not more than 50 percent it is not more than 50 percent so now as this is a uh, soft gelatin capsules formulation you can also add enzymes right enzymes if you are getting the lower release because of the cross-linking or pellicle formulation right and hence now as the dissolution is drastically dropped at 40 degrees celsius 75 percent rh the third experiment was carried out by adding the pepsin into the dissolution medium and then look at this black colored line 
upon addition of the pepsin the dissolution is meeting the specification so this all study you know including your stability study different uh, excipient ratios uh, has proved and confirmed that the dissolution conditions are suitable for loratadine uh, soft gelatin capsules so i hope that you know with help of practical example you must have now understood how to undertake and understand the uh, and how to define the various dissolution parameters uh, in case if you are developing a method for immediate release dosage form so thank you very much for watching this video and i will meet you soon with such kind of useful and informative videos Till then, take care and bye-bye. See you soon, guys.